Hey, good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. Uh, my name is Jade Alberts, and we are live from Calgary, Alberta, and of course on Facebook. I'm a workplace strategist that focuses on business and brand development, and my passion is helping small businesses grow and enjoy a work-life balance. Uh, today's small business telling it like it is topic is office infrastructure, and Cara Morgan is my guest from Planet Outsourcing based out of Toronto. Cara, thank you for joining me, and how are you today? I'm good, thanks, Jade. Uh, thanks for having me. Really excited. Oh, it's, uh, it's great to have you, and I guess... Uh, you and I met uh, on uh, the Startup Canada chat, which is, uh, which is a great chat, and we were talking about it before. So, I mean, we always stress networking on here, and, and it's been great. That, I mean, that chat's been great for me. How about you? Yep, same. I've met a, really, a lot of really good connections, made a lot of really good connections, and uh, touched base with a lot, of the, a lot of the experts that come on that chat, including yourself. And, yeah, it's been fantastic. Learned, learned a lot, of course. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, absolutely. It's, it, it is. Uh, there's very, it's a very good people up there and, uh, and, and, and obviously lots to learn. So I'll give a brief introduction here uh, about Cara and then we'll get into, uh, into the questions. Um, Cara is a founder and key innovator at Planet Outsourcing Solution. She works collaboratively with clients to uncover areas of improvement in their business management operations, business process management, and team interactions. Her goals are to increase efficiency, productivity, and profits, profits, reduce work, facilitate client care, and lower costs. Cara has over 20 years of experience improving processes and providing business solutions that focus on core competencies while transforming your vision and goals into concrete outcomes. So, I mean, that's impressive. You've been doing this for such a long time, Cara. And I guess my first question is, why is infrastructure so important to a small business? Well, infrastructure is basically, so to explain what it is, it's basically the foundation of your business. So everything that your, your, your operations sit on is, starts off with your, your infrastructure. So some people might call it the back end or your, your, your systems and your processes, but it's the engine that really makes your, your uh, operations go. So if you compare it to a plant, say, it would be the roots of the plant. So that plant needs to be nourished and taken care of. And if you feed it dirty water, it's not going to grow as well as if you feed it clean, healthy water, right? Or, or no, it's very basement, true. right? It's the same no, very true. It's the basement in your house. If, you're, if your basement is built, you know, it's poor material, it's not going to support the structure. So that's what your infrastructure is. And the reason why it's important is because it, it impacts your, op, your the cost, the overall cost of how you do things on a daily basis. So infrastructure um, costs, when they're high, it typically leaps, leaks into your operations. So that, that's going to mean that you're charging more typically for your services or your products. And that's why it's important. You want to keep those costs down. You want to give the same quality, but at a, less, at a lower cost or the same cost. Well, and that's a great analogy. The foundation is is the base of absolutely the success of every business. Um, I guess, I mean, customers are always looking at saving money. So how should they start this, uh, putting together that base of the infrastructure? Well, I mean, it, it's, initially you need to look at where the wastes are in your, in your, in your operations. So reducing duplication or if you notice that there are long wait times or bottlenecks, if you're firefighting constantly, things like that are going to Im impact your costs because they're, they're dead zones in your, in your business. There, there are time periods when you're not being as productive and as efficient as you can be. So some of the issues that you need to uncover uh, are the source of, that, um, of, those, of those dead zones. And they're typically in your personnel. So that includes the management. Um, your, your operations, your workflow, your equipment, which I'll talk about later, is, is uh, pretty important. Your tools, so your apps and what have you, your processes again, and your systems. So once you have a look at that, for instance, if you're not using um, Energy Star equipment, like stuff that they made 10 years ago literally eats up 10 times as much energy as something that they're making currently that's Energy Star efficient or simply changing out your lighting from compact fluorescence to 
LED can literally cut your up your your utility bills in half, um, things like that. So anywhere that you can automate, uh, as opposed to having things done, being done manually, is going to help you lower your costs. Um, anywhere that you can uh, make your systems and processes more efficient is going to to lower your costs um, or tightening up. Uh, your, your uh, personnel thinks that your, you do or that your staff does so that they're not overlapping. Like sometimes you have two people doing the same thing or two departments mm -hmm. that do the same thing. There's overlap there. So that's wasteful and that's going to cost you money. So you, if you can tighten those things up, it will do a lot to save you uh, money in the long run. Oh, great. And especially with small businesses and, and even startup businesses, it's so important to, to keep that money in your pocket and, and uh, being able to use it. Um, I guess with the recent implementation of Bill 148, businesses are facing, you know, noticeable increases in operating costs, um, you know, due to increased wages and benefits. How can they, um, you know, I guess, you know, make this work with, uh, you know, out compromising quality or really breaking the law? <laughs> Yeah, Bill, Bill 148, so this is um, something that's in Ontario uh, specifically. I don't know if it's the same bill in Alberta or across the other provinces, but it basically came into effect last fall, and a lot of the stipulations were rolled out in January. So one of the, one of the requirements is um, to bring the, the minimum wage up uh, to $14, and then next year it will be $15. Um, and also to give uh, paid, um, paid vacations. So right there, a lot of businesses are feeling the pinch as far as, you know, where am I going to get this, uh, this extra money from? Um, and so what I've seen is a lot of articles, a lot of posts on, you know, we're, we're cutting back on hours or we've had to reduce staff, that kind of thing. And that seems to be the go-to solution for dealing um, with this change, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. There are lots of things that you can do with your operations that can lower your costs, and we just spoke about some mm -hmm. of them. So, you know, tightening up your processes, putting good, good, solid systems in place, and really tightening down on your focus as far as what your, um, what your vision and your, your mission is, because what tends to happen is that people aren't really clear on that, or they're, they're, um, they, they have to, okay, so they're not really clear on it, but if they, if they were tighter on, you know, this is what our company does and this is how we're going to go about it, then it kind of gets rid of all of that gray area and you're not, you know, well, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that. You would have a very solid focus, kind of like a laser focus on what it is that, that your company does and, and why you do it. Um, and again, uh, just tightening up on, you know, your equipment and, you know, uh, focusing on where you're uh, focusing on, you know, how your, your employees can work better. So really clear expectations around what they do and how they and how they do it. Um, so basically, I think one of the one of the requirements for Bill 148 is around record keeping. Um, and that is key. When you're, when you're talking about processes and um, cost savings, it's very important to keep really good records and uh, really monitor how you do things, why you do things, and who does them. And, and, and they're going to be watching that very closely. For instance, if you're hiring temporary employees, um, you need to keep that information for three years. So you need to have a system in place where you've got who's doing what, when they're doing it, how much they're being charged, et cetera. And both the client, meaning um, the person that's, uh, that the, the temp agency is sourcing to, as well as the temp ag agency themselves, they need to keep track of that information. So um, just really uh, good record keeping around vacations, around um, uh, staffing. Um, there were a couple of other areas that slipping me right now. But just, yeah, that, in, that aspect of it is, is going to be key um, and really straightening out your processes and tightening things up. 
Yeah, I mean, we're 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 hearing it all over Canada for people I deal with with the the raise of um of the minimum wage with small businesses. So it is yeah. it is uh, not just an Ontario thing. I guess you know transitioning into employees, and we and you mentioned that. I guess you know I always preach work life balance, and employees are the heartbeat of the company. I mean, how do you get employees to buy into you know this infrastructure? Um. I think the main thing there is just making sure that you have the right people. Uh, first of all, hiring the right people that will buy into you, your vision, that buy into your story and giving them really clear um, expectations about you know, what their duties are within that, that, that structure. I mean, once, once somebody's on board with what you're doing and how you plan to do it, it's much easier than trying to you know, always convince somebody that's not really in line with what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So, I mean, first and foremost, you need to have the right people. Uh, you need to hire, I, this thing goes hire, hire, uh, slow, fire fast. So if they're Absolutely. not a good fit, you know, then that either brings them up to speed or, you know, um, to be harsh, replace them <laughs> with somebody that does uh, fit into that into that scenario, and yeah, just really take your time and hire the right person in the first place. No, I, I agree. I mean, I every as I said, you know, employees are the heartbeat of a company, and every company it starts with people. And mm -hmm. if you don't have the right people in place, and they're not buying into your vision, as you said, it's very hard to have a success. You know, build build the ground, the roots of a company, or and and build it from the ground up. And and that's that's exactly what you need. Well, Ka Kara, I really appreciate you coming on today and, and sharing your knowledge. I'm all about sharing and making sure that you know people are out there and if they they need a little help, that they can you know they they can tune in. And uh, again, I really really appreciate you coming on today and sparing you know a few minutes of your time. Thank you. Well, it's great being here, Jade. Thank you for inviting me. It's a wonderful chat. Loved uh, seeing your cat in the background there. <laughs> oh, 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 bubbles jumped up there. Hey, just. <laughs> Oh, he's getting some airtime, I guess. <laughs> well, excellent. Uh, again, thanks again, Cara. Uh, again, my name is Jade Alberts. I'm a workplace strategist based out of Calgary, focusing on business and brand development. And if you have any further questions, please reach out. Cara and I can answer the questions on our Facebook pages. And uh, have yourself a great week, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.